Good morning. My name is Annie Cook, and I'm an engineer at a startup called Nihilus. <coughs> Software bugs are unfortunately something we all have in common. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you all that bugs are bad. But bugs don't have to be exclusively bad. At Nihilus, we found a silver lining. We now use a process called bug dives to fuel our knowledge sharing across our teams. Let me tell you the story of how we got here. I joined Nihilus two and a half years ago, right when we started to grow our customer success team. At Nihilus, this is what we call our main customer-facing team. Different companies might call this role anything from sales engineer to customer support to QA. So if your version of this team goes by something else, mentally sub that in when I talk about customer success. Our product at Nihilus is technical. We make an API for email, contacts, and calendars, which means our customer success team must also be technical. Our customer success team was fielding technical questions from our customers, and when issues were reported, they were making tickets for engineering to look into. These questions and issues often arose in obscure parts of our system, and rightfully, customer success had questions of their own. We needed a way to effectively and sustainably teach the team about our large and complex product, and not just the main overview, but also about obscure and very specific parts of our system. Our first attempt was knowledge transfer sessions. Think small college seminar style, where we have a list of main topics, an engineer is tasked with one of these, they prepare some content, some diagrams, give a presentation, answer questions, and that's it. The topic's covered. We held a few of these, but knowledge transfers lost momentum quickly. Engineers are busy enough as it is, and after the first few knowledge transfers on the main topics, it was hard for us to get engineers excited to spend time preparing new topics. Another issue was that knowledge transfers were very high level. I remember attending one session titled The Sync Engine. This is a very nihilist specific term, but it's our core technology. It powers our entire company and is over 70,000 lines of code. 45 minutes later, I walked out of the session more confused than I was in the beginning. And the icing on the cake for me was when, after that session, we crossed off the sync engine, the entire sync engine, from the list of topics because it had now been covered. And none of this was helping customer success answer these very specific questions about our product. One day, I was working on a customer issue that had been open for quite a while about a bug in our complex message filtering logic. Eventually, I figured it out, coded up a fix, and marked the ticket as resolved. From the engineering team's perspective, this was case closed. But a few minutes later, a member of the customer success team sent me a message on Slack asking, hey, Annie, how did you go about solving that one? Was I on the right track? And aha, I realized a gap in our process. Customer success would work with the customer to report the issue. They would do their own investigation, perhaps come up with a hypothesis, and then hand off the ticket to engineering. Engineering would look at the context provided by customer success. They would do their own investigation, diagnose, and implement the fix, and then tell the customer just that the issue had been fixed. But there is a gaping hole in the feedback loop for the customer success team. What was the cause of the issue? Was their hypothesis on the right track? What was the fix? If a similar issue arises like this in the future, what could, what should customer success do? This was something I knew I needed to change. My initial solution was smaller scale, bug exploration sessions. I tracked bugs solved by myself and other engineers, and then I met with customer success to talk through how they were fixed. After a couple of these sessions, two things became clear to me. First, 
more people would benefit. I was learning a ton about different debugging strategies through having to talk through the debugging process of other engineers. And I knew the rest of the team could benefit from this. And second, this was fun and rewarding. And since I was doing this for bugs solved by other engineers, I was stealing the spotlight from those engineers. I wanted other engineers to have the opportunity to revel in the joys of their successes. Which brings us to bug dives, the process that we've had in place for the last two years. Bug dives are a souped up version of these small bug exploration sessions. Instead of me talking about the work of other engineers, for a bug dive, an engineer who solves a particularly interesting, illuminating, or surprising bug will present to both customer success and engineering. The engineer presenting crafts a document as a reference with links to relevant information, like the customer ticket, logs, graphs, etc. But this document is just a guide, and the majority of time during a bug dive is spent hands-on, going deep on the customer issue, the debugging process, the code involved, and the fix. The basic format of a bug dive is step one, the context, any information given or gathered before the engineers started to debug. This is to set the stage for the audience. Context can include the customer ticket, subsequent findings from the customer success investigation, or any conversations with the customer. Step two, investigation. Given this context, what other information did the engineers seek out? Where did they start digging? What was their hunch? Investigation usually involves walking through the code before the fix, looking at application logs or error tracebacks, following the journey that the engineer took that led them to step three, the diagnosis. How did the investigation lead them to the cause? How were they able to confirm the cause? This might include stepping through the code and or inspecting the data at different stages to demonstrate where things went awry. And finally, the fix. How do they solve the bug? Show the code in its new and improved state and explain why this solves the issue going forward. All of this is presented to tell the story of the exploration of the bug. There are three main components of a strong bug dive. First, the narrative must be detailed but easy to follow. Composing a bug dive is a bit of an art. You likely can't include every train of thought that you had along the way, but you still need to include enough detail that the audience can follow the flow of your journey. If you had an initial hypothesis that proved to be wrong, but that led you to an even better hypothesis, include this. Bug dives are much less about the fix and much more about how you got there. Next, it should be practical. We want to see the real walkthrough of the process. And we want these lessons to be grounded in our product and in our development environment so that any knowledge shared can be operationalized by both the customer success and engineering teams in their own debugging adventures. And finally, a bug dive should be conversational. You're not lecturing the group. The tone should be approachable and welcoming to questions about any parts of the process. Bug dives are a great time for Q&A. The engineer presenting is your organization's newest expert on the subject. And during a bug dive, you have free reign to ask any and all questions. In reality, bug dives are hyper-specific. Here is an example of a bug dive I led titled, How Does Message Filtering Work and Why Were the Results of the Any Email Filter Not What We Expected? You don't have to understand what this mouthful means, but I included it to ground the level of specificity that we are talking about for bug dive topics. A lot of the value comes from going deep on a certain topic, and the content is decided by the bug itself. Letting bug dives drive the content of these sessions removes the burden of having to continuously select and prepare new topics. And the fact that an interesting bug arose there in the first place is usually a good sign that we will be discussing a part of the system that the team is not already familiar with. Since beginning bug dives, I've noticed a profound shift at Nihilus. 
Not only is the customer success team empowered to better resolve customer issues, but the engineering org as a whole has embraced a culture of knowledge sharing. Bug dies have given us an arena to celebrate the sometimes tedious debugging work, and also a forum to share the team-wide learnings that happened along the way. Bug dives encourage intellectual humility and curiosity, but more than that, bug dives create a supportive and collaborative community. And this community is essential to the success of your team, to the quality of your product, and to your customer happiness. Thank you.